In this project, we're going to utilize image buttons to get input from the user to determine whether they want to perform a volume calculation on a cone, a cube, a pyramid, or a sphere. So these four buttons here at the top are our four image buttons. What follows below that is a vertical stack layout that contains a label. And then you'll see in my version, um, I also did another image below that label to show the formula. And then a horizontal stack layout that shows the image again, same image as we used in the image buttons. And then a vertical stack layout with the inputs, the, the solution, and a button for calculating. For each of the entry fields, I wired those to use a numeric keyboard, as we see in the last version here on the sphere volume. That ensures that users only enter numeric values. We will also change the splash screen and the app icon. I provide you all the graphics for the app icon, the splash screen, as well as the images for the different shapes and the formulas that are not shown here, but we will see in my version that I have running. You don't have to use the formulas. After I, after I created this, I thought, gosh, it would really be helpful to have the formulas there so that people might get used to what the formulas are as they run this app. A little bit greater educational value uh, showing that formula. So I have all four of the image buttons using the same handler, which I called Show Shape. And what I do there is I figure out which button was clicked, hide all of the four vertical stack layouts that are named. So VSL cone, VSL cube, VSL pyramid, VSL sphere, set the is visible property to false. And then I use four ternary statements, one of which will be true and will show the appropriate vertical stack layout. For the calculate buttons, I would suggest using try parse to verify that the input that was entered in each of the entries is in fact a numeric double value, or can be a double value. That might enter an integer, but that can be converted to a double value. If the try parse is okay, then in the if structure, you can go ahead and do the calculation. Otherwise, just show the word invalid in the output label. I also provide you the four formulas for the cone, the cube, the pyramid, and the sphere. Um, be careful that in a couple places I asked for the diameter, but the, the formula uses the radius. So the cone is a great example of that. We also have the radius in the sphere, but I have them enter the diameter. And then for your test data to verify, you can simply use the values that are shown in the four images of the app. Here is my application running both in the iOS simulator and an Android Samsung Galaxy S20 emulator. For this first one, I'm gonna enter 18 and 9.75. Click get volume, and the answer should be 827.02. Each of the volumes should be calculated to two decimals. And you can see it running there on the Android side as well. We can click the Q button, and then we get the same value, 311.67. Our pyramid, 5.25 for both the length and width. And then our height is 12.75. And our pyramid value is 351.42. That matches the response in the instructions. Same answer in Android. The diameter put in 20 and our sphere volume should be 4188.79. So I'm going to suggest you pause the, the video here. Do this on your own. And then if you struggle, come back and watch my code review, which will follow. Or if you just want to see how I maybe did it slightly differently than you did. I began the project by adding in the existing files for the app icon. So I have app icon VC SVG and app icon fig underscore VC dot SVG. And then for the splash, I had splash underscore VC SVG. 
and also added in then the images for the four formulas and for the four shapes of cone, cube, pyramid, and sphere. In the original instructions, I don't have the formulas there, so if you don't do the formulas, that's no big deal. And it adds a little bit of value to the application. Then in the CS project file, I changed the app icon and the splash screen code to reflect those files that I brought in and also changed the background color to hashtag 91CC84. That's kind of a seafoam green. And then in the XAML, I used the main page. You can enter a different page if you prefer. Um, I added in the title of volume calc project have a scroll view and a vertical stack layout. I set the spacing 25, the padding to 30 uh, on the horizontal sides, left and right, and vertical options of start. Start with a label. That is basically my volume calc title. And then the four buttons, our image buttons, are inside a horizontal stack layout. I give it that stack layout spacing of 10 between those buttons and horizontal options of centering those items in the stack layout. Each of those buttons pulls the source of one of the shapes from the images resources, so cone, cube, pyramid, and sphere.png. And then I set the background color to light pink and a border color of red, light green and a border color of green for the cube, light blue and a border color of blue for the pyramid, and lavender and purple for the border color for the sphere. And I have a little comment here that I originally set this as a height request of 20, which looked great on the iOS side, but that did not work on the Android side. Some entry fields are a little bit fatter or higher in terms of on the iOS side than I, than I would if I was just doing this for uh, iPhone or iPad, but it works. So I went back and, and, and basically removed that height request. So each of the four calculation areas is a vertical stack. So here's the one for the cone, a vertical stack, and I named it VSL Cone. I gave it a height request of 425 and a background of color of light pink to match the color of the image button for the cone. Then I have a label that says cone volume, and then I put the image of the formula underneath that, and then a horizontal stack layout that has the image in, in essence, the first column, and I and the horizontal stack layout will be centered, so the image will be centered on, in that column. Uh, give it a height request of 120 and a width request of 100. And then a vertical stack layout that contains the entry fields along with corresponding labels for what I want the user to input. And then one for uh, a label for the output, which I named cone volume and has a label to the left of that. And then finally, after those three horizontal stack layouts, I have the button that allows the user to click and calculate the volume. That button calls calc cone, and we'll look at that code in a minute. Then I copied and pasted this entire vertical stack layout, pasted it for the cube volume, and just simply made some changes changing the names, changing a few colors, changing the labels um, and what the label, what the entry names are. Otherwise, it's basically the same thing and did the same thing for pyramid. Again, making a few changes there, names, colors, text. Here, that calls calc pyramid, the button for the, doing the calculation in the pyramid visual stack layout. The one for the cube I called calc cube. And then again, paste it again for the sphere. The button calls calc sphere and just changing the images for the appropriate formula and text and colors and names of labels and entries. That's it for the XAML. Oh, by the way, on these last three, the cube, the pyramid, and the sphere, I set the is visible property to false. So those do not initially show up. But then in our code, if you don't do that in the XML, you can do it in the, in the code. I commented it out here because I didn't need it. And in the code, we're going to 
have that show shape handler that handles all four of those image buttons. And as I mentioned previously, all I'm doing is figuring out which button they clicked, hiding all four of those, which happens just in a microsecond. And then in a following microsecond, it shows one of the four based on what the color is of the button that was clicked. So one of these four ternary statements will, will be true. For the calc cone, going to use triparse to get the values from the cone diameter and cone height entries. And if those are indeed numeric, we're going to out those to variables D and H. And then if the parse is true on both of those, we'll get the we'll set the volume equal to math.py times math pow. I'm going to take the diameter times 0 0.5. I want half of it for the radius. I'm going to square that. So comma two and multiply that by h divided by 3.0. And then show that value to two decimal places in the cone volume label. If d parse and h parse are not true, so couldn't parse those numeric values, then I'll show the word invalid in that label. And basically do the same thing for the calc cube, but we have three values being entered. So make sure on your if you're Getting, make sure all three of those are true. There's your formula, height times width times length, dividing that by 3.0 will give us, the, there's a mistake there. I copied and pasted from a previous one. I wanna make sure that's out. So those, those examples or those answers that I showed you for the cube are actually incorrect um, previously in this video and in the instructions. So be aware of that. Yeah, the cube should be height times width times length. The calc pyramid, so I got these backwards. This is the one that should be divided by 3.0. And that should be the length divided by 3.0. Again, we're going to format that to two decimals. And then our sphere, taking, getting the radiuses as dividing the diameter by two, where you can multiply it by 0 0.5, either one would work. And then getting the volume of 4 thirds times math top pi times the radius cubed using math.pow. So let's go back and look at what those answers should be. I'm going to run this again in the iPhone. So let's go to the cube. If we do um, 2, 3, and 4, should be 2 times 3 times 4. 6 should be 24. Now we get the right answer. And on the pyramid, if we go 2 and 2, so it should have been length times width times height all divided by 3. I made a mistake there. So let me go back and fix that. I always want to check your your math. So let's do height times width times length divided by three. If you wanted, you could put those in parentheses, but we're precedence that two should do these left to right. And let's run that again. So let's go back to our pyramid. I'll put in two and two, so that's going to be four times three is 12, dividing that by three, we should get four, and that's what we get. So the answer that I gave in the instructions was 5.25, 5 5 and 12.75, and that response should be 117.14. I will go back and fix the instructions, so make sure you download a recent copy if you download this previously this week to my making this video. And on the cube, the values I gave there were 8.5, 11, and 10. And the correct answer should be 935 for the cube. My apologies for giving you faulty data to test with. Let me just show you one more thing, and that is the icon on both the iOS and the Android. Now on the iOS side, we're gonna get a blank splash screen, but on the Android side, we do see the splash screen. Bug in the splash screen hopefully will be fixed soon, but I hope you enjoyed this project and learned some things along the way. If you just jumped into this video, 
You can see all the videos from the .NET My Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.